But now we're getting down to the end of the candle making process. This is the uh, the honey. This is the honey one. And so you can see how nicely that turned out. Beautiful color. In fact, I don't think it's completely cured inside. So what we do now is we remove the wick holder. And now we have to trim. We want to cut that off about a quarter inch. Well, there we are. Now, this one poured very cleanly. There's no um, malformations in the surface. It looks really clean all the way through. So here we'll just simply put a lid on it. Oh, come on. There we go. Put a lid on it. And now the next thing we'll have to do is labeling. We'll put a label, warning label on the bottom and my label's on top. So we got a bunch more here to do. So this one here, you can see it's all deformed on the front. See how it's got this lip on there where it wicked up to the straw. And uh, so what I'll do now is I'll take a heat gun and I'll warm that up and that'll fix that. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and nip that off at a quarter inch. And for now, I'm just going to seal these up. And then I'll be doing all that heating up tomorrow. You guys will be able to watch that. This one here is really bad. Maybe you can see that. That's all really bad in there. It's all pitted and nasty. Dark color though. So that's one I'll also need some, need some repair. For now we'll just seal these up. Again, that one is gonna need repaired. That one I did not get the wick very centered in. It's off to one side. I didn't do a very good job on that one, but I'll I'll use that as a test burn. These are the first ones that I did. Hmm, they smell wonderful. These are all set and ready to go. Close that up. Yellow one, you can see a little indent in there, a little, little pit inside there. That needs to be heated up again, just on the surface, and I'll take care of that. Again, yeah, pull a little, pull my little wick holders off, on there, off here, and nip that about a quarter of an inch. Those really came out beautiful looking, nice white cream, clean, very clean. And another one here. Well, wow, see now you can see how much that moved in there. That one has a lot of needing to be fixed on it. That has a lot needed to be fixed on it. So I'll have to heat that one up with the heat gun. But there they are for tonight. Okay, so I've got my candles poured. I've got the uh, stems, uh, the wicks um, nipped in the butt. So they're all pretty good. I still am going to take the heat gun and smooth out the tops. I have to do that yet. But right now I'm labeling. And labeling is, is really simple. I get online and I order online labels. Online labels. They send me uh, a package of labels with a code on it that allows me access to a certain software package that I, I can use. And then I can go ahead and design and print labels for my candles. It's just stupid simple. So I'm going to have you follow along here with me and see if you can, uh, you know, kind of see the way I go about this. So let me aim you down here at my pooter. I guess that's about as good a view as we're going to get. Okay, so that's the one well, that's the one I'm printing right now. Let me go ahead and print it, and then we'll... Um, 
I'll show you what we're doing. Okay, so here's the, the, the design that I've chosen. I just kind of like that. And this scent here, it's actually frankincense and myrrh, but that's kind of a seasonal thing. I want to make these a little bit less seasonal, so I'm calling them warm and sexy. And so I go over here, and the first thing I do is I save them. So I have this design saved in here. And uh, warm and sexy. Got that saved. Go over here, hit print. And there we are, print. And that's going to go ahead and print off a full sheet. Um, there's four across, times five, there's 20, 20 labels that get printed off all at the same time. My printer is now printing them off. Only takes it a second or two. Sheet of labels. And peel them off. I like to buff the top, make sure there's no dust or dirt on it. And then I simply center as best I can, and there I am, I'm done. I still have to put my warning labels on the bottom. But, uh, yeah, and I've got enough labels on here for 20 jars of this, of this color. And I'm going to uh, put those here in a file and save them for later so that later on when I go to uh, make that particular scent again I've got the label set. Now next thing I got to do is I got to go ahead and put the warning labels on but the other thing I have to do is I have to do my documentation. I'm creating a file in here so I can put my formula as to how I'm making these candles. How much wax I used how much scent uh, scent I'm using. Now this state said these are um, uh, oils, so I, I've got to be careful on them because they have a certain flash point. So I've got to write that down. Um, and then if so how much wax, how much scent, how much colorant. On these warm and sexies, if you remember, I wanted to just put a drop, but I wasn't I didn't know about the bottles and how much the bottles were, and I ended up dumping way too much in there. So now I've got practically a black candle, which might be kind of pretty while it's burning. It's uh, brown in color, but there's so much brown in this it actually looks more more black than brown. So, anyhow, let me get my other candles, my other labels. Okay, well I got my heat gun so I can clean up the tops of these. And then I also have my warning labels that I have to go on the uh, on the bottoms and again just simply peel one off very carefully oh, there now of course it's not going to come off easily is it it's going to be difficult isn't it let me undo the tape on here I buy a roll of these for two hundred and fifty dollars but you can uh, you can also use the same labels and method uh, that I just used for printing my labels on top. Uh, in fact, there's already a warning label created as one of its templates. So again, I take a little warning label, I just center it on the bottom. Give it a good push down. And there, that's ready to go to market. That little piggy's ready to go to market right there. You can grab another label. Do the next one. There's really no, uh, there's really no upside down, right side up. It's just a matter of getting them put on and stuck to the bottom. The thing is, this candle making is it laborious. Yeah, there's a lot of labor involved. Um, a lot of label, a lot of label, a lot of labor, labor. And one of the things I'm also looking at is how well my wax adhered to the glass. And this appears to have adhered to the glass quite nicely. Makes for a nice looking 
uh, candle. Some of them actually appear to have gotten some weird stuff. Like, look at the bottom. You see all the particulate there in the bottom of that one? I don't know where that's coming from. That doesn't make sense that there would be particulate. And I also see that there's wax running down the side of a couple of these. So I have to wonder... Okay, so these are the ones that I filled or overfilled. You can see the line on there where the uh, um, the little straw that I was using to hold the wick in place. So lesson learned, I can't overfill these. And then when I do overfill them, what happens is then it uh, it runs wax down the side of the the glass, and so now I'm gonna have to take wax and clean this up. One of the things I'm doing though, I'm putting my labels on the lid and on the bottom, but nothing on the side. I don't want anything on the side of the bottle to interfere with your ability to see the flame. Because to me, candles are a lot about looking at the flame. Maybe I'm just wrong that way, but if you can't see the flame because some label is blocking your view, uh, you know, what's the point really? And, you know, I know a lot of these candle makers are all about who they are and they're really impressed with themselves and, and as well I guess they should be being entrepreneurial and starting their own little business and all but I do think you got to concern yourself with the person's buying. Isn't that a pretty color? Look at that. Isn't that a pretty color? It's actually a little redder I think than it shows up on the camera. Um, very pretty. Very happy with the way my first candles came out. Again, there's a little bottom, a little warning label on the bottom. Now that's going to be really pretty as that burns down. This I, I named this one Bee Honey. Um, there are some people that manufacture honey under false pretenses. They actually use uh, high fructose corn syrup and add some stuff to it to make it taste like honey. Um, when I had my farm market up in Alaska, there was a girl there that kept trying to come to our farm market and sell honey products. <clears throat> and all she was doing was taking <coughs> excuse me, high fructose corn syrup and adding colorant and, um, <coughs> and stuff in it to make it taste like honey. Well, our market up there was a... Uh, it required you to be uh, manufactured in Alaska. <coughs> Excuse me. It had to be a made in Alaska product, and she may have been making it, but I felt it was under false pretenses. Coming to the market selling people what they thought was honey, when in fact it was high fructose corn syrup. Because high fructose corn syrup isn't very good for you. Most of the high fructose corn syrup is produced commercially in fields that have grown up with uh, Roundup. They're, uh, they're Roundup ready, so you've got the glycophosphate in the, uh, in the plant, and if you have it in the plant, it's in the pollen. If it's in the pollen, it's in the honey. Just the way it is. So I don't want glycophosphate in my food. But that's a whole nother video, folks. That's a whole nother video. So there you go. My candles are done, except I got to heat up the tops and make them look a little better. Let me do that. Okay, I had to come over here to the other side of my office so I could plug into what I hope is an electrical outlet that can withstand the, uh, the voltage here, but uh, put this on high. My little Wagner heat gun. And then you can see, I don't know how well you can see that in there, but the center of this, let me turn that off for a second. The center of this candle isn't right. You can see the wick is moving incorrectly. It's not, it has a little void that it got down in there when I poured it. So what I'm going to try to do now is correct that by heating up the wax on the top. And then it will See, that's the liquid on top now. I don't know if I can show that. I can't tilt that down far enough. But what it did is it melted the, it melted the top 
I don't know if you can see that, but it melted the top and filled the void down in there where the wick is. Now I'm just going to let this sit off to the side for a little while and then that'll solidify and I'll have a nice looking top on that one. Let me grab another one and we'll do the same thing. For some reason both of these ones that had a lot of colorant in them, both of them did the same, did the same thing. So, and just like that, we could fix it. That's going to leave it with a nice, smooth looking gonna leave it with a nice smooth looking top well folks there you have it candle making 101 and uh, boy these uh, I'm, I'm real impressed with how nice these, these came out now the big the big test for me is now going to be going ahead and doing some burn tests and I'm going to take one of these cucumber melons that overflowed you can see a little bit of overflow on there these are the ones that I overfilled a little bit and uh, with the lid on I'm crushing the wick because I've got too much wax in there and you can see a line in the top where the straw made contact and so and my wick's not in center it's off center a little bit so I'm not happy with this one so this one here I'm going to go ahead and burn and you can see where the wax ran down the side of the jar. I gotta clean all that up. And it's through the threads on here as well. So just not a good situation. Um, debating whether I'm gonna give this to my daughter-in-law. This is a cucumber melon and she really likes that scent. So I think I'm gonna give this to her She's kind of stuck at home right now with uh, with the uh, COVID. She's got the COVID, so let me grab a paper towel. I have to go into town today anyway, and uh, clean that up a little bit on the side there. I don't know why I'm getting little black specks on the bottom. All I can think of is there must have been some impurity in the wax because the wax that I used, I mean, it was just bulk wax. It must be, I mean, it kind of looks like pepper, like a little bit of pepper on the bottom. I'm bothered by that. I don't understand why that is. I'm going to talk to my supplier on this and see if they can explain to me why I have pepper the bottom of my candles. Whatever it was, it was heavier than the wax because it settled to the bottom. But I didn't do anything in my knowledge. I didn't do anything to contaminate it. I used my aluminum pour pitcher into a two cup measuring cup and from there straight into the candle after I added colorant and the scent. And the scents like I'm noticing this one, it's still got a little bit left in the bottle, but you know, there's no particulate matter in that. I don't see anything in there that would, there's just a little bit left in the bottle. I don't see anything in there that would indicate that there's any issue with that. Um, and that's the one that's in, that's the cucumber melon scent, so that's the one that's in there. Maybe it was in the green colorant. When I added the green color, I didn't see any when I added it in because it went in, you could see the drops go in and dissipate, so I didn't see that. But I'm going to have to work on this and figure out what's causing that. I'm also seeing a little bit of, almost looks like ash forming along the bottom of the jar. And I don't like that either. But other than that, I think they're really good. But I'm being highly critical. I'm being highly critical of my own work. 
I don't see that ash forming in uh, in the patchouli. I don't see it forming in the honey. And again, the honey, there's no, none of that pepper stuff in that one. None of the pepper stuff in this one. And this one really would show it to patchouli because it's just plain white wax. And this one, you wouldn't be able to see it if there was any. But I'm not seeing any uh, um, of that, you know, kind of oxidation stuff going on. See what I just did? <laughs> I just made a mess of this one by tilting it on its side while the top was still wet and melty. Oh, well. Still good. It's still fine. It's still fine. I bought candles a lot worse than that in the past, so. But I'll, I'll clean that one up before I sell it. So there you have it. So, you know, you, you get your jars and you stick your wicks in the bottom of the jar. Um, you develop a way of keeping that jar separated. And I ended up just taking, you know, big pens and making a hole through them and using that not only to stick the wick at the bottom, but also to put a hole through the middle. And... Uh, Melt your wax up to 170 degrees. Don't go past 170 because your your uh, oil your oils will uh, uh, ignite at 175. So, uh, but then you mix that oil uh, in with the uh, the essential oils in with the wax, and let that cool down to 125 to 145 degrees. Then you pour it into your clean glasses with the wicks in them. Make sure your wicks are centered. Let them sit overnight to cool off. Next day, label them and you're, you're ready to package these and put them in the mail to people. So, pricing. What am I going to price these at? Got on Amazon, looked at these candles this size, 8 ounce candle, $12.95. That's what they sell for on Amazon. Um, this is as good as any candle on Amazon, so there's no reason for me to charge any less. Uh, now, this candle, how long is this going to last? Uh, this is going to take a long time to burn this. Uh, the the uh, I'm using um, soy 464 wax, and this is going to be like uh, a week, <laughs> a week, eight hours a day for a week to burn that candle out. Probably even last out last that. So uh, it'll get you a good long burn time on those. And when you're done, you have a jar you can make jelly in. You can recycle it. So. You get twice the bang for the buck. Not only are you buying <coughs> a nice candle, but you're buying jelly jars at the same time. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this little series I'm doing on candle making. And I hope you'll follow me here on the next thing. I'm going to do some, uh, some soap making here next. So all kinds of projects you can do at home, even if you're in an apartment, to get you to save money so you can buy your homestead. That's what this is all about right now. Trying to make banks so I can buy a homestead. These are projects that I would normally be doing at the homestead anyway. So I might as well start doing them now and getting the income coming in while I'm working towards my goals. So thanks, kids. I appreciate you watching. Be good. Be careful. Take good care of one another. And we'll have more for you in the near future. Bye.